I just woke up from one of those naps that if I didn't live alone, people would be very concerned about. <laughs> was gonna try to vlog today. Like I wanted to vlog my day, but I didn't get out of bed until 6.30. So I figured people wouldn't wanna see that. <laughs> By the way, nothing to worry about, just menstruating. <laughs> Here we go again. I've heard, I've had people like complain to me about how often I bring up my period. It's like, wow, you're always on your period. Like imagine how tired I am. Steven. Imagine how tired I am. While I was in bed though, I watched the entire season of Romance Killer, Romantic Killer, the anime. Very cute. Highly recommend it. It was really cute. I really liked it. Anyway, hello, by the way, it's Kendall here. <laughs> if you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, sat my lips are so dry. Everything on me is so dry. It looks like I was shoveling my fist in powdered donuts. Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. And I'm actually doing it this week. <laughs> Sephora VIB sale was a few weeks ago and I got some things and I'm really excited about it. I wanna play around with makeup and talk about movies, particularly a movie that <laughs> I, ha I don't know how I feel about this movie. Um, a lot of people love it and I'm like, I it's camp. <laughs> so I am curious if you've seen the movie, like what your thoughts will be. I'm sure it'll be a fun time down in the comments section. But before we get started, we gotta send it over to Adroll Kenny. Bills keeps me in luxury. Oh, speaking of luxury, here's my uh, Mr. Gigi hoodie. His, um, his merch drop. You can't see shit. I hope it's not too late. He sent this a while ago. <laughs> Adrolls, whatever. Hello everyone, it's Adroll Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Ritual. Ritual is the maker of obsessively researched and resourced multivitamins, as well as other products that help support general wellness. I have their Essential for Women's 18 Plus. That contains many of the essential vitamins that are very easy to miss even in a healthy diet. The vitamins are, it has a long list, vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and contains no added sugar. And because transparency is at the root of everything that Ritual does, you'll be able to resource each of the components of the multivitamin and know exactly where it comes from, as well as their environmental impact on the world. They also offer multivitamins for men, 50 plus, prenatal, for kids, teens, and they've also recently launched their essential protein. My favorite part about Ritual's multivitamins is that they're very easy on my stomach, even if I take them without eating beforehand. Go to ritual.com slash KennyJD and use code KennyJD40 for 40% off when you bundle with Symbiotic Plus. Big thanks again to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the butchery. So it's been a little while since we talked about a bad movie because I was sucked into Love is Blind. Uh, last week we did my uh, second part of my very large deep dive into season three because it was a mess. But the last time we talked about a bad movie, we talked about Torn, the passion flicks CGI sequel to the other like supernatural romance piece of shit <laughs> that came out last year called Wicked. It was nowhere near as good as the first. The first one was a masterpiece. This one was just nearly three hours of filler. There is no, it is disrespectful that any movie on passion flicks is over 90 minutes. There is nothing you have to say that is worth saying over 90 minutes on passion flicks. You have got to be out of your cotton picking mind. Anyway, if you wanna check out that video though, you can check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies and a Beat playlist. Play, wow, playlist, playlist. <laughs> Today though, uh, girl. Um, I'll start by saying this. Over the past few months, I have found myself like enjoying going to the theaters more often than I used to. I love going it by myself particularly. It's something very cool going to a movie theater at like some random time on a Tuesday where nobody's in there but you so you can watch the movie and emote fully. You know what I mean? There's something really beautiful about being in a movie theater where no one else is there. So you can laugh at the inopportune moments and you can cry at parts and really feel this very like fully emotionally cathartic 
environment. Like when I watched old. <laughs> Today's movie, I actually watched off of the recommendation of one of my managers. Hi, Cole. This is your fault, Cole. <laughs> Cole recommended that I actually go see a film called The Barbarian 2022. Um, at the time it was still only in theaters. So I went to go see it. He referred to it as one of the few unique horror movies to come out in recent memory. So I was very intrigued by that. However, when I left the theater, I wanted to cuss his ass out. I was like, what the f was that? With that said, though I wanted to cuss him out, I can't say I wanted to cuss him out because the movie was bad. Honestly, to this day, after watching the movie, like, in total of two or three times at this point. It's hard to say whether or not I hated or enjoyed the viewing experience. <laughs> I'm leaning towards enjoying it in, in, in the way that I kind of hated showgirls at first, but I'm slowly like, you know what? I kind of with it. It's really weird and off-putting, but I kind of like it. But I will say that I left the theater deeply confused. <laughs> so if you were ever to venture into reading a quick synopsis of the film, it will give you a rundown that sounds similarly to this. A young woman discovers the rental home she booked is already occupied by a stranger. Against her better judgment, she decides to spend the night, but soon discovers there's a lot more to fear than just an unexpected house guest. And that is the understatement of the century. <laughs> this normal ass summary does nothing to prepare you for the shit show that you're about to walk into. And I kind of love it. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of camp. So if you haven't seen the movie already, it is available on HBO Max right now. I personally would recommend watching it. I do feel like this movie benefits from you going in blind, but being that it is a scary movie, a lot of people like me to watch it so that if you're weaning so that you don't get scared, Scaled. Like a cute yo baby yeah, cute wire, you little punk ass bitch. <laughs> so a little punk bitches like me to watch it so they don't get scary wee wee. So I would recommend if you wanna watch it through me because you're scared of scary movies, or if you've already seen it, or if you just don't care enough <laughs> to care if there's spoilers, this video will be a fun time for you. Otherwise, if you plan to watch it, I would recommend watching it first. But with that said, if you are fully prepared to go on this ride, yeah, fuck, yeah that's what you're getting. <laughs> so I genuinely had no idea what to expect when going into this movie. I knew that it was a horror movie. I knew that it was set in Detroit, which I have feelings about. Uh, if, you don't, if you're new to me, I am a Detroiter, born and raised. I was born and raised in Detroit. I always get a little uncomfortable whenever Detroit is brought up in any particular movie. Honestly, any majority black city I get concerned, um, but particularly Detroit because that's where I'm from. There, there seems to be this kind of like air around it that it's fucking Gotham. <laughs> and people use it as this kind of theoretical shit place. And this movie does really lean into that. I think to some degree in an effort to make some form of social commentary, but maybe I'm a little sensitive. <laughs> but yeah, the movie, uh, that's all I really knew about the movie going in. I knew it was a horror movie. I knew it was set in Detroit. Oh, I did have a few people bring it up in the comments when I was talking about love in the villa. In the beginning, kind of sounds like this movie if it were like a, feel good movie. And this is like the other side of the coin. If that was like a horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> Honestly, that's almost kind of poetic. Romance stories are horror stories if you just change the lighting and the background music. <laughs> so without further ado, this is The Barbarian 2022. So the movie begins and we meet our main character. Her name is Tess. She's in town staying at a local Airbnb, which apparently she did no research on that host at all. She's in town for a job interview. And the movie begins with her coming to the door, realizing that she's not able to enter because the key in the lockbox is missing. And it's nighttime and it's dark and it's raining. She just finished traveling, you know, she's exhausted. And this is like the final straw, you know? But then she soon realizes that the reason that the key is missing is because the house is already occupied by um, discount Evan Peters. <laughs> Uh, this strange man insists that he also has a confirmation for the room that he is supposed to be there. And again, like I was saying, this is very word for word at this point, very much so uh, Bonnie from Vampire Diaries finally getting her romance arc in uh, Love in the Villa. But like 
scary. <laughs> He's this kind of like awkward, fumbling over himself type guy. We as the audience kind of follow as Tess does the things that you think is appropriate to vet this guy to make sure that it's safe to be around him because ultimately he ends up asking her, would you like to stay here being that you don't have anywhere else to go? There's a convention in town. All the hotel rooms are closed up. You've already rented this place out. Rainy, you shouldn't be like just sitting in your car. You can stay over if you would like to. So reluctantly, Tess ends up deciding to stay. And from the jump, we as an audience kind of follow her, her suspicions around this admittedly awkward and strange guy. But he also seems to be very hyper aware of her aversions to him, her skepticism. He seems to be wanting to kind of trip over himself to make sure that she feels comfortable. You know, seemingly having some pretty good understanding of why this is a very uncomfortable situation for her. We don't know if this guy is a good guy, a bad guy. We don't know if he's gonna harm her. We don't know, can he be trusted? And the movie does a really good job of, you know, making us feel uncomfortable with her and mistrustful with her. This brush had makeup on it. I broke it. I was just being dramatic. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna break it. Oh shit. But despite all her hesitation, he does extend an olive branch. I thought you wouldn't want any if you didn't see me open it. So I waited. Or he wants to give her alcohol so she gets drunk. That's what I thought. I was like, mm. Through the course of them drinking a bit, they end up talking a bit about how they actually have quite a bit in common. They talk about the new job that she's up for and that she's doing her interview for. She's trying to work with a documentary filmmaker. She's done work on some more obscure documentaries in the past about jazz. This guy, his name is Keith, by the way, um, has seen it already. And she's like, no, there's no way. And they end up really bonding over that and getting a bit closer. Reluctantly so, of course, but you can tell that, you know, some, some, some coldness is melting away. With that said, he still says certain things that will make you kind of go, this man is a killer. They talk about how she's just leaving out of a relationship um, and he kind of encourages her to get back out there regardless. Maybe find someone else. Even if that means that you may get your heart ripped out of your chest all over again. You know, maybe outside of this would be seen as more innocuous, but in a horror movie, it sounds quite literal. Eventually he ends up disclosing that he's actually the founder of some company that matters to her. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's another thing that brings them together a bit more. He's like scoping the area. So they kind of talk about that a bit and that's what he's in town for and why he's in this particular Airbnb. You know, gentrification and all that. These are heavy lashes. Ooh, I can feel every blink. Okay. And before they end up calling it a night, there does seem to be some chemistry between them. One of the sexual kind, one that would elicit coitus or other jostlations of the genitalia, but nothing uh, happens right here at least. It doesn't happen at all. It doesn't happen this entire movie. However, in the middle of the night, it would seem that her door that she had closed before she went to bed suddenly was open in the middle of the night. And she's awoken by Keith making noises and shit in the middle of the night. So she goes to wake him up, right? What the hell do you want? Did you open my door? You're making all this noise out here. What's going on? All confused and annoyed. He's like, no, I didn't. What are you talking about? No. She's like, okay. And then she just goes back into the room, locks the door until the morning. It's the next morning and she finally awakens after a very restless night. Keith leaves her a note to leave the key for him so that he can get back into the Airbnb if she doesn't come back in time. But now in daylight, she notices that she is living in the one house that's still put together, even though the rest of the houses are a bunch of bandos. So she goes off to do her interview. It seems to go well. And the lady that does her interview is like, oh, where are you staying? And she tells her Brightmore. The white woman in complete horror and dismay is like, oh, you can't can't be in Brightmore. That is where they spin the block. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Side note, I hate this hair color on me. I always hate brown on me, but I keep trying because I believe in myself far more than I really should. Um, so I'm gonna dye this wig green. So don't enjoy it for very long. The woman is like appalled that she would stay in that area. She's like, no, that is not where civilized people stay. I'm joking. That's kind of the vibe she has though. It's very like, oh, over there? No, you, you don't belong over there. <laughs> Again, 
read into that how you will. She arrives back to the Airbnb and is quickly chased down by a local crackhead on the way in. Come here! Hey, little girl! That I don't know if he's a crackhead, but I, I feel like I should give him a name because in the script, all I've called him is local crack. <laughs> he might not even do crack. I'll call him Jimmy. Jimmy chases her inside the house, which freaks her out. This He's just yelling at her, little girl, little girl. Understandably freaked out from this interaction. Tess goes inside, call the police. They said, girl, we not sending nobody out there. Did you die? If not, please don't call us for this. She then decides to just get over it. She ends up venturing into the basement when she runs out of toilet paper on the upstairs bathroom and she goes downstairs to find more. She accidentally locks herself downstairs because the door closed in on itself. She's there without her phone and there holding the key to the Airbnb. So if Keith comes back, he can't get inside. For a black woman in a horror movie, at least half black woman in a horror movie, she's incredibly nosy. So I was a little concerned when she ended up finding a secret door in the basement that leads off into an incredibly dark and ominous hallway. But she did respond the only way that I personally feel is appropriate to respond to a circumstance like this. But if she made good decisions, we simply wouldn't have a movie. If anybody made good decisions in a horror movie, we'd have nothing to watch, babe. We wouldn't have entertainment if people didn't make mistakes. You know what I mean? At first she cautiously aims a mirror down in the basement to shine into the hallway to see what might be back there. But eventually she does end up taking her whole last body into this ominous hallway. Not at all terrifying and not at all a bad idea. Around this time is when I started to ask, did she ever get that toilet paper? <laughs> Imagine getting killed in a secret passageway in the basement with doo-doo still cake between your booty cheeks, not by choice, but by circumstance, that's embarrassing. But anyway, she keeps venturing inward until she ends up finding this kind of secret room that gives very Serbian film vibes, gives snuff. It's obvious that something weird and uncomfortable and possibly most likely illegal was happening here. But right when she finds this room, that's when Keith arrives back at the Airbnb. She's able to bang the window in the downstairs basement so that he can hear her. And she's able to hand him the key so he can come into the house and get her out of the basement. She runs to him screaming and crying about the snuff room that she just undoubtedly found. And he's like, what are you talking about? She was like, there was a bed and there was a bucket. And he's like, okay, are these dangerous things? She was like, something messed up is going on in that basement. Something messed up is going on in that basement and I'm not gonna stick around for it until she does exactly that. Because he's able to convince her to stay because he's like, okay, fine, I'll go check it out, but I need you to be near the door so that it doesn't close in on me. And so she agrees and he goes down, ventures into the basement and into the dark corridor. Next thing you know, you hear Keith scream. And I'm sitting there like, dude, we don't even know him enough to go saving his. <laughs> We've known him for what, 18 hours? I think our relationship is deep enough for me, for me to risk anything. I can't risk a cockroach to go help you, but. But she goes after him and ends up finding out that the corridor didn't just stop at that one room. It goes on and on and on. I'm sitting here like, we still can't call the police? Like sure, they didn't come for the crackhead running at you, but you survived that. But I'm sure they'd be a little bit curious about the dungeon in the basement. I was wrong about that. That was actually not true. They don't. They don't actually give a f um, <laughs> But she goes in, she's venturing in, she sees cages that seem to be big enough to hold a human in and like doggy bowls and stuff. And it's just like some weird shit is going on and it goes on and on and on, right? It's like, when will it end? She eventually is able to find Keith and he's crawling on the floor whispering. And I don't think she took in that he was whispering because this bitch was loud as and I don't know about you, but if we in a dark cave and bitches start whispering, I would think it's for a reason. I would probably pipe the fuck down. But this bitch start yelling, oh my God, Keith, where did you go, Keith? He's like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Something's strong here. God, Keith, we gotta go. We gotta go. Gets a jackhammer. Ah! And lo and behold, what's down there is a monster of sorts, if that's what you wanna call her. They kinda of treat her like she's supernatural. We'll come to find out there's nothing particularly supernatural about her. Maybe just circumstances. But she gets her first lick in of the movie. I probably can't show much of that. This is who I like to affectionately call Titty. Ah! 
uh, because her titties out the whole movie. And it there's something, <laughs> I don't know, maybe this is my own internalized misogyny, but there's something about titty swinging in the midst of the absurdity of this film. You know, getting killed while her titty swinging, that's really, <laughs> I don't know what it is about that that sends it to a level of absurdity for me. But after we're introduced to Teddy, we're gonna be sent over swiftly to a hard cut to a random guy in California named AJ. He is played by Justin Long, which is when you know it's gonna be some bullshit when Justin Long pops up, especially if it's a horror movie. Side note, yes, I've seen your request to watch Tusk. No, I have not watched it, but I have seen clips and I don't wanna watch them. <laughs> movie but I might do it just because my curiosity is almost akin to our dear friend Tess here and I like to make myself sad but I say all that to say that Justin Long is act if I'm not mistaken is also in that movie he is the walrus right <laughs> if I remember correctly he is the walrus I was watching this with a friend and she brought up how he kind of looks like Geo from in black if he were biracial and that's such a specific <laughs> comment that is incredibly funny if <laughs> you got the reference that's a very very esoteric reference but if you get it it's very very funny <laughs> but anyway in this movie he plays a man named aj who is like a like a big shot actor of some sort someone in the industry and we meet him if as he's living seemingly his best life just driving down the street in his convertible um and we meet him right as he's getting a call in which he's being fired from whatever project he's on because his co-star has accused him of rape. He swears up and down, this is a misunderstanding. I should just talk to her because there's no way I did not do that assault. They're, they're basically warning him that there's gonna be an article out, she is suing you, and that will be released tomorrow. So just be aware of that, that's what's happening. I think what's really interesting about how this character is written is that there's absolutely no subtlety at all, but also, He's not that absurd, if you get my drift. Oh, maybe, I, I guess to some degree you could consider it a little over-exaggerated, but not really. <laughs> There's nothing particularly cartoonish about him, but I will say him popping in from what the movie was originally is such a jarring experience because you thought you knew what type of movie you were watching and you're kind of right, but you're not all right. <laughs> so anyway, this article is dropping tomorrow and being that he's just been fired, he's going to his wealth management team to see what he can do with the fact that he just lost his job. They basically suggest that he liquidates some assets, particularly his properties that he has in Michigan. We're gonna come back to Michigan so that he can have some money to go into this lawsuit that he's about to go into. You guessed correctly, one of his properties is the Airbnb where Keith's brain residue is currently decorating the walls. And so AJ goes to this property. Being that this house is technically his, he's like, okay, I'll stay there for a little bit as we liquidate some funds. He comes in, notices that the basement door is open and doesn't think, anything about that at first and just closes it by the way. Then notices that there's a lot of evidence that someone was staying here recently. There's luggage, there's clothes. So he ends up calling the property manager and he's like, hey, is someone staying here right now? And they said, no. He was like, well, people's things are here. Like when was the last time someone was staying here? And they were like several weeks ago. So no one should be there. So he's like, do I have squatters? Like what's going on here? So he starts to get a little nervous, starts to get a bit uncomfortable. But before you get too concerned about him, he gives you, again, another very hard hitting display of suckery. What up, f <laughs> Guess who's back in town? <sighs> again, as awful as that is, something about that line really does make you hate him, don't it? But like the more he talks, the more you wanna like shove a baseball bat through his ass and see how long it takes to come out the other side. He ends up meeting up with some friends. That would suggest that he probably grew up in the Michigan area and that's probably why he has property there. And he ends up getting asked by his friend essentially like, what's up with that? Did you did you really end up attacking that girl? Where Did you really assault her? He basically gives all those like gross justifications like, but I mean, she wasn't into it originally, but I kind of, I'm persistent. <laughs> you know, essentially I wore her down long enough until she was into it, which is not 
what consent is an undescribed amount of time. He just kind of like chilling at the house and we're like observing him sucking. But eventually he does reach the conclusion that something is going on in the basement. So he decides to go down with like a steak knife and a flashlight. My n that is a fruit knife. What are you gonna do, cut oranges? But once down there, he shows that he too is incredibly curious. Everyone is so damn curious in this movie. <laughs> Horror movies wouldn't exist if people made good decisions. Uh, he ends up also going down the secret passageway. He also discovers the sketchy room. And instead of noting that, wow, this seems like the set of a snuff film, he's like, this looks like more square footage that can increase the value of this property when I sell it. So what does he do? He goes upstairs. He's like, hey, can I count this as general square footage? Finds out that he can and goes all the way through all the dungeons, all the snuff rooms with his tape measure just to make sure he gets an accurate amount of money when he sells this property because People are, I'm sure are picking it up because it's a very hot property. So he passes up the dungeon, all the evidence of crime. Eventually he continues on long enough until he finds a room that is playing one video of a woman breastfeeding over and over on a loop. And for some reason, that's the thing that freaks him out <laughs> more than anything, the human size cages in the snuff room, but seeing someone <laughs> breastfeed is when he's like, ah, what is this place? <laughs> Which is obviously a social commentary thing. I, I, I know what the movie's doing. <laughs> it's still, hilariously out of pocket though. So right then he ends up being attacked by Titty and Titty takes him over to a dungeon where he is locked up with Tess. Hard cut to the 1980s. Don't get too comfortable. Gotta shake him up. Never know your next move. And here we meet a creepy white man named Frank who is living in this house. We see Frank coming out of the same home, but now it's back when the neighborhood was occupied for lack of a better word. The camera work during this part of the movie is funky. Throughout the movie, it's pretty funky, but particularly here is like, disorienting. But we kind of follow him throughout the day in which he does very suspicious activities. He goes to a store, he buys rope, but no one thinks anything of him because he's also there buying baby items. He dresses up as like a electrician or some, some like worker in uniform to enter a woman's home that he had been stalking earlier so that he can go into her bathroom and unlock the window so that he could come in later and kidnap her. We also see that one of his neighbors is talking about how he's going to move out of the area because the area is going to shit, hell in a handbasket or whatever. Um, and Frank basically says he's not going anywhere. Back to Tess and AJ, they're freaking out in a dungeon underground apparently. And the only way that they'll be able to survive in this situation is if they are Titty's baby. <laughs> Remember when this movie was about going into an Airbnb with a suspicious stranger? Titty sends down a bottle from the top of the gate uh, and Tess is like, drink it. She wants us to be her baby. Drink it, that's how we survive. He refuses, but Tess, <coughs> this shit is gross. Titty comes down, gets some cuddles from Tess, but because AJ refuses to give some love to Titty, uh, she takes him off to be breastfed, thus gives Tess the opportunity to escape. So in the breastfeeding room, uh, he gets booped on the nose and off her a titty. No! This is perfectly what happened and when this happened, but at some point this movie just devolved into a comedy or maybe it was always one all along and we just didn't pick up on it at first, but here we are. But like I said, Tess was able to escape. Uh, she ends up cracking the window in the basement and ends up crawling out. What did I call him? Jimmy. Jimmy ends up helping her get out of the basement. He was like, I was trying to tell you, don't go in there. We all know she in there. Now, because Titty went chasing after Tess, he's also trying to figure out how to escape. He ends up reaching a secret door that even Titty seems to be afraid of. Once he ventures inside this door, that is where he finds Frank old and ailing in a room with no ventilation. I know it smelled crazy in there, dog. Ain't a window in sight, smell that'll peel the paint off the walls, oh my God. Meanwhile, Tess is trying to get help from police to help AJ in there, which is crazy because she thought she could trust that motherfucker. and he <laughs> 
I guess that's the moral of the story. You never know who you can actually trust, you know? But she goes to the police. She's like, hey, can y'all help me? Like a guy is stuck in someone's basement in a dungeon being attacked. I just escaped. I've been held hostage and they don't believe her. They think she either on drugs or is having a psychotic break or something, a mental health crisis or something. So they don't believe nothing she says, but she is eventually able to convince them to come over to the house and she goes kicking at the door and they're like, we don't have a warrant. We can't go in. Like we got people getting shot. We not staying here for this. Goodbye. So they just leave her out there. Back to AJ, he's like rummaging through the things in the room, there's just like a tube television and VHS tape. And soon he ends up discovering that the VHS tapes are actually women that Frank's assaulted over the years and recorded the crimes. AJ is like, oh, you sick f and then uh, Frank shoots himself in the face. Tess goes back to the house, breaking a window so that she can take her car keys out of there, then gets in the car just as Titty comes out to attack her. She's able to drive the car into Titty until she's bashed into the house, apparently killing her. I, this is where I would have took my ass home. But again, tis a movie, she has to be a hero. She has to go save AJ of all people. Again, she doesn't know, <laughs> she doesn't know that he's horrible, but she must find out because <laughs> like, she goes down there going to help AJ and uh, he has taken the gun from Frank that he used to shoot himself and accidentally shoots her thinking that she's titty monster. She survives, but I would be pissed. Here I go, this is why you don't do good things for people, because you always end up getting shot in the stomach. They end up being able to escape with the help of Jimmy, and Jimmy kind of allows them to get around a fire, and he's like, oh, stay here for a bit. And he ends up telling the lore of Titty. Uh, basically, Titty is the result of generations of inbreeding. Frank is a monster who trapped up women in his basement and assaulted them. And then they would have children and then he would have children with those children. And that's just how we got here. I don't know why uh, incest gave her superpowers, <laughs> but y'all remember when this movie was about going to a double booked Airbnb? Such a far journey we've taken together. She's never left that house in the 15 years that I've been staying around this area. You're fine. <laughs> This is when uh, Titty decides to, you know, shake it up and uh, leaves the house for the first time in 15 years, goes, attacks Jimmy, beats him with his own arm. That <laughs> she out of his body. Again, I don't know when this movie turned into a comedy, but here we are. <laughs> and then the other two run to escape. They end up going up like a water tower or something. But once at the top, AJ, uh, pulls an AJ, something we definitely expected from him. And he not just throws <laughs> Tess over the edge, he grabs her by the tracks and pushes her ass over the side to distract Teddy so that she will save her because that's her baby and he can make his escape. But after Tess survives the fall, uh, AJ then commences to gaslight her into thinking that she slipped. <laughs> You grabbed her by her tape ends. You, what do you mean? But it's okay. She doesn't have to deal with his bullshit much longer because right then Titty wakes up, pops both of his eyes out like gushers with her thumbs and then rips his head open like a fresh steamed pork bun. And then Titty turns to Tess being like, oh my God, my baby. And uh, Tess shoots her in the face. And that's the end of the movie. Essentially, she just like walks off and um, that's it. That's the movie. Y'all remember when it was about two people that were sitting there? <laughs> I have so many questions, but also, also feel like there's no point of asking them. Like, again, why does inbreeding give her superpowers? I'm conflicted. I'm confused because what the f was that? The movie does have quite a bit of social commentary. It's also just batshit by itself, even if you don't really consider the social commentary. It certainly took me for a tailspin. Again, that's not the movie I thought I was walking into. For that, I give it points for not being particularly predictable. I think it's a fun movie to to like unleash on your friends. Like they don't know what they're walking into. I think it's a fun time for that. Do I think it's as great as people say it is? Not really. <laughs> and that's, you know, being aware of the social commentary within it. Um, other movies have done this social commentary better, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I just like it for being off the f wall, but I also hate it for being on the fucking wall. I am kind of confused why so many people like it though. People rate it very highly. 
And they're like, whoa, this movie is, is incredible. And it's like, it's fine. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have any other movies that you think I should check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.